Hello, uh, everyone. This is Slater again. We're back uh, with our third interview here. And I'm really excited about this because this is uh, Elder Terry Mickens. And I have not seen this man in 20 years. As a matter of fact, um, there's a church I used to go to, um, the Greater New Life uh, Apostolic in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, when I was like 11 years old. 10, 11 years old. That's actually the church where I got saved. And um, uh, Elder Mickens here was my Sunday school teacher. Uh, we used to do Sunday school and like Wednesday nights, uh, different things like that. Uh, I remember him leading prayer a lot. It's just uh, a, a treat for me to see him on here after all of these years. So welcome, uh, Elder Mickens. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll tell your audience audience there that um, meeting Slater and, and uh, his brothers was uh, was quite. Uh, I tell you, uh, uh, I think Willie Stringer was a facilitator, if you like me to say that. Was uh, uh, was the you know it was an awesome time. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and and to see the the move of God on these young people uh, with Slater, which we always talk about him. So yeah, he he's the He's going to be the head honcho of this outfit here. And, uh, but the, the sincerity, uh, audience, a, it was amazing. It was a blessing to, to witness that. Um, uh, I was always close to him because I was, you know, uh, the minister of music as well at the church. And, and I was playing the services 99% of the time. And, and so they were always sitting, always sitting close by on the front. And uh, so I've uh, been in this, my dad pastor church for almost, uh, 10 years. Our church been in existence since uh, 85. So saw a lot of young people. Um, but I can easily say on one hand, uh, this minister uh, Slater, by far, uh, was in the top five of, of the of not only the more more chosen, uh, but the one that you you saw you saw it happening before your eyes. Even though we we kind of split ways and that happens that always happens in the body of christ doesn't mean anything negative uh necessarily god is sensitive about his people um and if anything begins to you know and i, I won't get too deep on that but it's just the idea you belong to god and he has a way of covering you uh no matter what happens and where you go in life uh and to find that he would be in st louis at this time my gosh i mean that's a long way from from uh, from Hattiesburg and and uh, but yeah, it's a timing is everything and but I'm so proud uh, of of the host here and, and this opportunity to be to be here today. Your words are very very kind. Yeah, you you were the minister of music. Like uh, just remembering so many things from that time period. I've been in St. Louis now um, eight and a half years or so. I went to culinary school here, so it's it's just uh, amazing how the Lord calculate so many different things and where we end up over the years and yes. his timing is it's it's, uh, it's brilliant when you think about it just who can do that but the lord right so um but you know i, I asked you here uh today elder mickens to uh talk to you about the christian perspective on the 2020 elections um i've seen you uh over the last couple of years or so ever since we've been reconnected on facebook very vocal about uh, where you stand on these issues, um, especially being um, a black man. To stand where you stand is uh, quite controversial at these times. And I just wanted to ask you, have you, I just want to hear your heart on the situation. Where do you stand as far as uh, God's will concerning the election this year, what he wants? Uh, has he spoken to you about it? just kind of share your heart on that. Okay, so, um, and I would, I would do that uh, in kind of like a double, uh, dual way. I'll, I'll kind of address maybe a, a couple of questions while I'm talking. Um, but to say whether or not I'm a Trump supporter, um, number one, 1,000%, yes. Um, even from, uh, from the time that he, he literally ran for office back, uh, announced his, uh, his intent back in uh, 15 or 16. Uh, I knew one thing, that 
the Lord was not pleased. Uh, and what I mean by that simply was that what, what I've, I ascribe to um, is that what happens in the natural happens in the spirit. And uh, so there was no doubt in my mind that what he represented is what was needed in this country. Um, I preached a message a long time ago um, concerning what the Lord sees from the inward side, not the outer appearance. And I was drawn to that scripture primarily because of the controversy and how many have um, us, you know, taken that portion of scripture in uh, 1 Samuel and attached that to their religious convictions. Okay, well, it's the same. I saw how much it, trouble it was for Samuel to literally get past Saul. And I see the same effect in the natural realm, uh, and that's the image of Saul. You know, the Lord had to tell him, I've rejected him, go, stop crying, go, <laughs> it's over with. So from that point on, all right, well, in this country, uh, we're facing, uh, uh, we have, as a nation, uh, have literally been caught up on men pleasers and, and, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of carnality um, as it pertains to picks and chooses, you know, obviously we have Democrats and Republicans, but in the grand scheme, there wasn't enough going on. It was too much, uh, um, you know, just, just flesh or too much, just not nonprofit going through. And so we had to have someone to rise up from within the country who loves the country, um, and willing to put it all on the line. And those who will be called of Christ uh, in these days, especially in these days, are going to have to come out of that, out of that clique, out of that system, to where they're not on on either side of the of the formalities of the church, but someone to come literally up uh, that really comes against the stereotypes and uh, and really fight if if it took putting their life on the line. And so uh, I saw that immediately. Now I would go one step further. I've never was an Obama uh, supporter uh, at all. I mean, even back in 2008, that's where it started for me. And as as uh, 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 Minister has stated, yeah, I've been in controversy for a long time. And because I'm ordained elder, I'm a district elder. Uh, and so I've got a lot of voice, a lot of, you know, so I don't mind using it as a platform. And I, literally in church, I have educated individuals about what were the policies of Obama's administration, support of gays, uh, same-sex marriage, uh, the enable, uh, enabling the LGBT, uh, you know, movement, and, and so many other, and that's just on a moral base. So I faced the, the, uh, uh, the issue with so many of my brothers in the pulpit, and most of them uh, older than I was, uh, that this waited for a black president. They could not get past that. And so it started for me back then. As much as I like Obama, I thought it was a cool guy. I, I love sports. You know, there's a lot of different things he, he seemed to be really down with and trending. But, uh, but the bottom line for the church, he couldn't, he couldn't be supported. But yet it happened. And, uh, but anyway, about it. Uh, so I'll just stop for now that, you know, when it came to Trump, it, it had to be. There was no way I was going to vote for Hillary Clinton. There was too many skeletons in the closet, not because he was just a woman or anything, but there was a long history. Uh, with, with, the, with the Clintons. Uh, I, I watched a video one time called a Clinton Chronicles. You can pull it up on YouTube, the Clinton Chronicles, dated way back 96, all right? And, and it, it, this detail, what happened in Arkansas, and, and a lot of the, the, the question marks and so forth, it started way back then. So I was always skeptical, uh, but I didn't see any change in her lifestyle. I didn't see, you know, and, and I'm just talking about just, just due diligence in the political area. It was always something crooked, something questionable. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll just stop there for now. Yeah, I, I can agree with you. Uh, 2008, I was 19. That was the very first election I could vote in. And I remember praying. And I, I remember asking the Lord, you know, how do you see this? And I knew because there, there was so much talk about a, a black president, you know, let's support, you know, we're, we're black, you know, blacks are supposed to vote Democrat, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. And I just knew something didn't sit right in my heart. Just something was off. 
I knew he was a smooth talker. I knew he had the support of my whole family. Everybody spoke nothing but good about him. But something just didn't sit right with me. And I, just, I couldn't bring myself to support, uh, even though I knew I would be crucified for it. <laughs> so um, when, when Trump began to run, Trump was not my first pick. And I, like I hear you say, you know, you supported him from, from jump. But when I, when I heard him, the first time I said, no, I don't like this. But then I remember asking the Lord about it. And I remember actually hearing what he had to say mm-hmm. and said, man, that's, that's what we need, right? We, we don't need another career politician who's just going to say what they got to say to get elected. Um, but as far as where the country stands and speaking from, again, a Christian perspective, where the country stands um, in, in lieu of the judgment of God because of our waywardness and what we have allowed and what we have promoted and legislated and whatnot, we needed somebody who was going to come shake up the game, right? To come shake the system. And that's exactly what's happened. And like you, the support is 1000% uh, for President Trump. So let, well, let me ask you point blank then, why Trump? <clears throat> why couldn't so, it have been, you know, back, you know, during the first election cycle when, when Trump was running for the uh, nominee, um, you had Ted Cruz, you had Dr. Carson, uh, you had others who seemed to have a, a higher moral standard over Trump. But why Trump? Why, why would he be the better leader? So I would say, and that's a great question. Um, as you mentioned, the state of the country, we needed a revival. And it had to come from the furthest. Uh, matter of fact, let me skip. Let me, let me uh, bring in, when the pandemic happened this year, the last message prior to it actually like, well, it, it, was, it was known, but it wasn't like detrimental to the church at the moment, at that time. The last message that we, that we had in our church, uh, I preached, um, and the title was that, was, uh, Are You a Troublemaker? And it had to do with uh, Elijah. When Ahab looked at him and said, are you the one? <laughs> are you the one that trouble this? He said, no, you have. So, you know, immediately, you know, and I'm telling you, that was the last message. After that, it was like, I knew God was all over that. And the church was shut down. And it hadn't been opened since and reopened until like this a month or so ago. Uh, but it hasn't been the same, but not a, not a discussion. But anyway, it's just the same concept, the same idea. Trump represented uh, the, the, the revival uh, that had the intent to bring back to the country, uh, restore the country, was his vision, way beyond anything that Cruz and, and a couple of the others uh, had proposed. Now, these guys are already in the system, and, and being that they're politicians, you know, and so it had to be Trump. Now, that's not including, there's so many signs. Oh my God. Um, when I begin to approach God's folks with scripture, uh, when you talk about King Cyrus, you know, in uh, the 45th chapter, uh, I believe of, uh, of uh, Isaiah or Jeremiah 1 or 2, talking about how God placed this man um, in, in position, Cyrus, to help God's people. And, and so, oh my God, there's so many things I can say, but to see the church and, and begin to turn sour on this man, uh, immediately, you know, mock him because again, one of the issues is he's not presidential. You know, he, he didn't have the training. So you mean to tell me you can't give him benefit of a doubt for not being the quintessential, you know, uh, stereotype president with all the right speech, man, you knew what you was getting. We, we the world, the country knew that the trade-off for him not being presidential is that he promised so much. And again, the church's struggle, and I ain't talking about the country, I'm talking about the church. The the church's struggle with looking past the outward appearance of a a man um, was on display early and often. And so, yeah, these were signs for me to know. You know, God is speaking. He's a 45th president. 
you know, and, and I've seen more Christians, I'm talking about leaders now, I'm talking about bishops, I'm talking about traveling evangelists, name brands, I call them, and they run around and they won't even call the President Trump. They, they call him number 45. I think that is the most unbelievable, uh, <laughs> brother. So yeah, these are reasons why it had to take Trump, the things that he promised, uh, the, the policies to bring jobs back, so much was lost through politics, and he gave up his life, basically. Uh, uh, you know, it's all these types of, types of signs that let me know, yeah, we better look at, uh, we, better, we better know that this is the man. So, uh, but then one more thing about it. When I looked at Hillary, we had some of the most diabolical uh, uh, accusations that began to rise up. And I remember election night, I did not go to sleep. I was in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I'm an insurance broker. And, and so I was at the office there that we have. And, I, and a lot of times I had, to, I had to sleep at the office. If I didn't get a hotel, I had a room in the back, literally in the closet and I had an air mattress and I would sleep. And literally that night I was in the back uh, there and I stayed up all night on my computer watching the results. But the things that were happening, like the uh, Pizzagate, uh, uh, you know, these were some of the most hor horrendous um, uh, alliances with dealing with kids and how they were the pedophilia and the sex trafficking and all that, that was attached to Hillary, you know, according to those emails, you know, which was another part of it. You know, I, I'm looking at the church, y'all don't see, it's just too much. And, and all of a sudden, it, it, WikiLeaks is able to, to, to hack into it and, and that's, the, you know, oh my gosh. So yeah, it was an easy choice at the end of the day between the two for so many reasons. Yeah, what, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, since Trump took office, um, and we especially see it here in St. Louis because this is one of the big cities that um, has this issue, but so many sex trafficking and child trafficking rings have been exposed, um, and so many kids have come home. And um, what we see in that is, of course, it is not publicized on the mainstream media um which why you know we see trump even though like you were saying he doesn't have the tact of you know being presidential but one of the things that we do appreciate is we know what we're getting with him at all times there's no hiding there's no secret there's no you know uh hiding behind the language the the right kind of language to speak things like that so um a lot of people don't know that that's actually going on as we speak uh, globally, not just here in the U.S., but globally, these things are being broken. And uh, I was uh, having an interview uh, with another brother um, yesterday, and uh, the big thing that was for him was justice for the unborn and justice for the children that are caught up in these things. And, uh, we, you know, we thank God that, you know, somebody is standing for justice, right? There's, there's true justice being re that's reigning in this nation. So let me ask you then, Elder Mickens, you know, we all understand uh, the church or one of the themes that's uh, constantly hit on no matter what denomination a person is a part of or what, um, what their background is in the church. But we all understand, at least in some part, the sovereignty of God and that at the end of the day, uh, everybody would agree that God would have his way in whatever he wants. But with that being said, why, why would you say it is a responsible thing, especially in the times we live in now, for Christians to vote? So um, by, by far, we have every reason to. I mean, the, the issues, uh, and I'll be honest, I went through a spell where I didn't vote for probably three presidential terms prior to Obama. I just didn't, I didn't feel a need. It was just too much. It was too close. Uh, da, 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 this policy here, that policy, but it was nothing, again, detrimental enough to uh, affect the church. Uh, and so I didn't, I just didn't. And, and you know, I, I don't mind saying that. I'm very clear, transparent. Um, but when, again, when Obama came into play, and to see how quickly, like you said a moment ago, how quickly he rose up and, and all that and didn't see what his policy. So it, it brought in, that was my way of knowing right away, the church needs to be involved. 
this is not normal politics. This is the kind of politics that would, uh, you know, used to be said that when, when, you know, everything was taboo when I was growing up uh, with, with, you know, homosexuality, some of these, these perverted actions were always done, you know, not, not for any attention. It was always hidden. It was, it was taboo. Well, when, when rights begin to be given, give power to that, and they begin to have their voice uh, and literally demand, you know, to where you walk in the streets naked, you know, to show off, hey, this is us, you know, honest. then, you know, of course, that, that empowerment, you know. Um, now, I will say this. I remember when Bush uh, gave a couple weeks in the month of June uh, to the, the gay and lesbian. That June was the month, I believe, it still is. Uh, it may have expanded, I believe so. But at that time, he had allowed for two weeks. And I was like, wow, man, that's amazing. So it's not just a Democratic Republican thing per se, uh, because I remember that vividly. But anyway, church, the church folks, uh, all of our people, definitely, uh, we need to be engaged. There's no excuse for it now, um, uh, especially now to, to be engaged. But let me go back to a couple points that, I, that uh, from the last question you gave me. I want to make sure to put this out here as well, really quick. When you look at uh, Trump, you know, he said, make, he made comments like drain the swamp, you know? And, and so, you know, nobody's like, well, what does that mean? You know, uh, let's get rid of the politicians that's in, in the office, which and technically, yeah, that's part of the read, that's part of it. But it was more so uh, what I found out to be a lot of these perverted actions, you know? And, and that, in, that was included. So that's another reason why to support. And then when you look at the things being said, like, well, uh, as soon as he would get office, we're gonna impeach him. You know, it was immediately where the, the, they, the Democrats uh, went in to try to, uh, and, and so I'm saying that to say this, and even Republicans weren't really with him. You know, they were, so he came in literally by himself, even though he had attached himself to the Republican party. I don't know if y'all all remember that, but <clears throat> excuse me. The other part is that when he went to Twitter, and and I'm saying these are points where people like, you know, were 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 aggravated, ticked off. Even me, I, I'm 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 trying to understand him. You know, not that I'm. Uh, there's a reason why he's doing everything, saying everything. But I saw he had to go to Twitter, and I realized why. It's because <clears throat> immediately the mainstream media turned their backs on him. He had to report his own news. Now, I'm not saying he had to, everything had to be on Twitter, but the majority of the things that were happening that he saw immediately that would not be uh, uh, reported, that's a whole nother dynamic as to why, uh, whether I supported Trump or not, that's not fair at all. I've never seen a president talk, they talked about Obama and how the media didn't like him, white folks didn't like him, whatever. They was, you know, and however legit that was or is, um, I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, the bottom line is I have seen a the pattern from the beginning. So that created, you know, uh, uh, and the brother's not saved. And, and folks talked about his morality and all this because he made some comments, some locker room talk, you know, but yet he has a, a fledging family, you know, that, that has been with him, that basically forsook their livelihoods to come in and help him. And we talk about the church is all about family, but we have lack of family in church. So, you know, but yet nobody's really making an outrage about that. But here it is, you have a family coming together. So it's, it's so many good things on the optics of it. And I understood why he had to go and report his own news, more importantly. That really, I understood that's because the, 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 the three letter networks, nobody was gonna tell it right. And they actually have done that every single, day of the year since he's been in office, it's never been about nothing that he's ever done right. I told one preacher this, I'm saying something, then I'm shut up. Uh, 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 a pa uh, or he's a pastor preacher. He's under the, the presiding bishop of the PCAF. And I'm not gonna say his name, but I'm trying to say everything but his name. I asked him one day, I said, my brother, I said, is there anything you could tell me that this, pres that this president's done right? And you know what his response to me was? Apostolic fully through and through, like I said, name brand, he travels, he, he's got a lot of demand, whatever. And he had another tell me that a clock broke is right two times a day. I said, brother, you got to be kidding me. This is all you have to say about this president. And this is a couple years ago. But this is why I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, 
I, I don't understand where the church is, but I, I just stopped there. But I just want to let you know some more of those points there. Yeah, so hitting on that same thing, uh, <laughs> uh, you say that, okay, Trump had to go to Twitter to, you know, report his own news and, and all that. And we see, we see why, of course, the mainstream media uh, absolutely despises him. Um, what do you say to the believers who can't get past the moral failings of President Trump? I would say, first, show me where those failings are. Because, again, the man's not saved. And for, for the church to hold him to a, a safe standard, uh, is, is, is beyond me because the actions, whether it's not taking a salary, uh, I don't care how much money you got for you to, 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 to take $1 and basically as a symbol of you not and donating your salary to all different types of causes. Okay. He came in, had a bunch, uh, uh, uh had a ton of money, whatever, but he paid all kinds of folks, which another part of the idea about the taxes, uh, you know, the morality, these, these are examples of morality that, that has, has to be admired. Don't come telling me that, well, he's a billionaire anyway. No, that's not right. <laughs> the fact is, he, didn't, he still didn't have to leave. When you, when you compare the career politicians and how they come in with nothing, and they're millions and millions of dollars richer right now, what, who has a whole, the higher moral ground here? You know, so we, th those areas, yeah, he speaks freely. Yes, he should at this point. That's why I mentioned that the church has never given him a chance from the beginning. And, uh, and so because that, yeah, they, they, you know, so he's going to be on a defense, but I don't see anything. I don't see anything controversial that he's done, uh, but work hard entirely, entirely every single day to, to, to output, you know, almost three times the, any administration prior to him, especially as it pertains to us black folks. So that's hogwash for someone to struggle at this point with so-called morality, saying, well, he, he just, huh? Hold on. What, what do you think Biden is doing? What do you think he's already done? That's already known to have done. And the report came out just the other day, yesterday, is coming out more clear that there may be something, uh, uh, him, Obama, and, and Hillary, something that had to do with the, with the Benghazi. That's not done with, that's never been dealt with. You know, our, our, our highest level uh, uh, trained SEAL team was, was lost. You know, and, and, and there they might be billions of dollars attached to, to you know, to that country over there. And uh, so, I mean, there's so much more immorality all the way up to the current day and hour that we're talking about on the Democratic side. That's not even been touched. Forget about the, the, the China, not even including with, with the, the Biden's connection there and, and Hunter's uh, being paid that, the, the, the money that Trump was trying to bring out during the debate <clears throat> that he was de uh, denying. I mean, you don't find anything like in, in Trump, Trump's family. Uh, uh, it's so we, what kind of morality are they talking about? Is what I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's more along the lines of rhetoric. Um, yeah. Maybe they, they don't like the way that he speaks. You know, they they see him as a proud man, as an arrogant man. But one thing I think you'll agree with is um, his love for the country. Mm -hmm his love for the constitution, uh, his love for law and order. Yes. Um, and these, these are things that are necessary in order to even have the United States of America, right? Yes. Um, and for our government to be set up the way that it is, I think it is a privilege for us um, to, to live here, to be born in this time, and to have someone fighting for those values, especially of the, the nation's founding, I think is important for us to look at. And so that's my next question for you. What do you see in Trump as far as uh, policy is concerned? That Because you mentioned King Cyrus, and you mentioned how the Lord had raised up Cyrus because he was kind to the people of God. Um, and what we've seen, like I know, um, Trump, when he was running the first time, had mentioned things like the Johnson Amendment and 501c3. Um, and a lot of people don't know that uh, you don't have to be 501c3 to be tax exempt um, in, for, for a church anyway. Churches are automatically tax exempt, but those who go that route of 501c3 could have that tax exemption status taken away if they came out and spoke for or against any political party or candidate. 
And I remember when Trump, you know, said, you know, love me or hate me, you should be able to speak. Right? So um, I, I thought that was one of the things like you could hear. And I, one of the things that struck me, and I want to ask you about this, was no politician before him, I know in my lifetime, was as kind to the church. So there was no real incentive for any politician to, in a sense, go that hard in wanting to help the church. Yeah. Um, and yet the church on a large scale still rejects him um, yes. because of like rhetoric. But what do you see as far as policy that has really um, helped the church or helped the nation in general, and, and not just this nation, but the nations of the world, since the U.S. sits on the top, uh, I guess we could say, of the food chain of all the nations of the world, what what do you see that is more beneficial than what a person, especially a Christian, would see on CNN, ABC, MSNBC, uh, even Fox News at times? What what do you see in that? Okay, so I, I would I would say, uh, and I'm and I'm gonna tell your audience this, and you know, um, uh, if I'm on Facebook, uh, Terrence Makins. Um, actually, Terry Makins is where you'll find me. I'm standing, my profile pictures, myself and my wife together. Uh, I'm in black and she's in a red top. So you'll know there's a couple of the, the t Terry Makins. But I share so much real-time articles, so many articles. And one of them I shared was um, when you look at what the vo voting guide, um, there's a website and I share some documentation from that. This is what he's maintained from the beginning. So, but you, you can be reminded of this, uh, whether he's against tax uh, payer funded abortions. Um, um, and I'm just gonna read a few of them. Born alive abortion survivor protections. He supports that. Uh, Roe versus Wade, we know what that was um, or what that is, religious liberty, um, the, what he's against. Um, now, Ro, of course he, he's, a, he's against Roe versus Wade, but. I'm, but I'm just naming these. Um, he also opposed uh, the restrictions, as you mentioned, on, uh, on religious liberty, which is that what they call that Equality Act. Um, you know, that <laughs> these are interesting points for the church. All of these, you know, if they care about life, and I've heard the same, and even the same preacher I've mentioned about, oh, he, and, and that's when, you know, we was kind of following each other a little bit then. That's not the case no, anymore, but. He would always say, well, all the Trump supporters would say, uh, you know, support or what they always worry about is abortion. What do you worry about, brother? Uh, you know, religious freedom and worship services. You know, though, in other words, if you got bylaws, there's not going to be infringed on. Like you mentioned the Johnson Amendment, what that was, he repealed that. Um, I'm just, you know, reading some of these things. The embassy moved to Jerusalem. These are things that fundamentally, morally speaking, uh, that's a slam dunk. Moral reasons, policy. That's why I tell people when I, when I respond to them, it's not so much Trump is my favorite guy, which I do on a slick, I really do like fella. You know, I appreciate, you know, his candor and uh, love how he speaks. He's a good, very good, he's easy to listen to when he's on doing his live events and all the people that comes in and all that and they're there. But, it's just that the policies, the church can't say anything about what he were actually speak louder than words. And I don't care what you have issue with his personality and, and things that he say, that it, it, whatever. Okay. Again, that shows more face to the church and how it always have looked at the outer appearance of people anyway. And I, I know that for a fact. I've been in church for 40 years uninterrupted. And I know I've experienced out of parents' preferences. You know, I was uh, the, the, a victim of that because I, I wasn't tall. I wasn't the, the, you know, I didn't have to be. So the church has always been stuck there anyway. But yeah, there's so many reasons uh, the church doesn't have an excuse anymore. Um, you know, and even to the, to the criminal justice reform, and it's so much. I can go on and on, but just to answer your question there, yeah, there, there's a lot of reasons why church folks uh, shouldn't be uh, ignorant anymore. Yeah, so what do you see then uh, ahead for our nation? I know the election is in just a few weeks. Um, and I, I know initially 
what I believe the Lord was getting at with me about having these types of interviews anyway is because there would be so many people um, on the fence. Because uh, what we see, uh, you mentioned um, the outer appearance, you know, man looks on the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. He looks at the heart. <clears throat> and I would say not only have I been a victim of that myself, but I've been a perpetrator of that in my life as well. And I could see it on both sides, how um, I guess we would say emotionalism has trumped true spirituality, um, mm -hmm. a true connection with God and his will and what he wants. And um, I, I, know, I know Christians who, like I said, they're on the fence and they're like, you know, they really can't get past what they see on the news. They can't get past what they hear. It reminds me of, um, of Isaiah 11, where uh, the Bible says of the Lord, he will not judge by what his eyes see or what his ears hear, but he will judge with righteousness and with equity, right? And how, how would you say a, a, a Christian should go about making a judgment call at this point? The, the ones who are on the fence. Now you have some who, uh, sad to say, or let, let's say staunch Democrats or staunch Republicans, and it doesn't matter what it is, they're just gonna vote across party lines. They've already pretty much set themselves that way. But those people who really wanna know, man, I, I really wanna do right by the Lord. I, I really wanna follow him in this. How do I make a judgment call amidst all the chaos, amidst all the noise? You, you got these people accusing him of ABC one, two, three. You got him coming out saying, no, 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 no. Like, how do I see these things? Okay, so the again, the policies, if the church don't educate themselves or have it by now, there's just no hope. To say that this election, and, and let me go back to one more sign or symbol, last name is Trump. And we know the, the rapture, the last Trump, uh, dead in Christ. But the fact that he has the name Trump already could easily, in my guesstimation, with all humility, I've thought about this a thousand times, similar to the Isaiah 45, uh, 45th chapter, you know, the Cyrus uh, attachment. But the fact that his name is Trump and how it could be, this could be literally our last president if he's elected, uh, uh, reelected. His name could even symbolize to, to, to that much, to, to that degree, rather. God could really have been just like with no equivocal reason that the church would look and say, Lord, what did we do wrong? No, I, I had too many signs. It could easily be that way because, and I've heard there's, there's, there's individuals out there, there's a brother who I, have, I was blessed to meet, name is Marcus Rogers. He's on uh, YouTube. He was basically kicked off Facebook because of the things that he said. Anyway, I had a chance to meet him and he come and sit in our Sunday school class about a year or so ago. He was passing through. And, but anyway, I'm saying that the policies that the president has put in place uh, to support, to bring back the facts, you know, we're not having talked about, we didn't get a chance to talk about the coronavirus thing. Um, you know, the, there are so many questions in the air. And, and as you said, the, 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 the folks are going down the rabbit hole much faster now. They can't get past uh, the, the, you know, the, the coronavirus restrictions and, and, and you, oh, look at him, he, he got coronavirus, that, that's what he get. There are so many things out, we could say that that was not a wise thing, him having, you know, uh, those eatings in, in the garden, whatever, visibly folks without masks and that kind of thing. I would give you that. But I will also give you that, and I'm kind of talking a little deeper, a little advanced on this one, because I'm, a, I'm not a, a proponent for masks myself. Matter of fact, me and my wife at the church that I go to uh, do not, we're the only ones who don't wear masks in the church. So it's, it's so much more for me. I have been, and I'm gonna say this with all, with don't hope I'm not misunderstood, but I feel and I have felt the, the plight of the president um, to the point in the spirit realm, uh, I feel that I've had to sacrifice that much more myself 
And I'm literally saying it just like that. I have got people on my Facebook timeline that don't have the convictions that I have, you know, with doctrine and, 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 you know, uh, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm more con conservative than a lot of, a lot of folks that I, that I'm friends with. And I'm talking about, these are preachers and pastors that, that they speak out in support of the president. And they have been basically putting themselves on the line to lose all their friends. And I'm like, if these people can do this, this is where my inspiration has come. I'm watching him already being hated and power through. When you look at that sham of an appeasement last year, uh, and yet he was still making policies for the country. Now, I know if people are still struggling, they don't see nothing that I'm saying. They don't really realize. But I, I don't mind putting it out there because this is how far behind you are if you're still struggling. And I'm sorry that's the case, but you know what? That's, that's a personal problem. There's no excuse for looking for all the wrong things by now and knowing that this country is faced with two people, Biden and, and, and Harris. Uh, literally, you can pull up the video. I don't even have the time. You just, you just do the research on that, if you would, uh, audience, on what, what, what type of conversations do they have with each other? Well, how, how did she get to the top? How many affairs does she does she uh, have with with uh, with men? How, how many black men does she put in in prison for for you know for little nothing crimes that you know it's so much you can look at. So for the church um, and, and then the policies, if you go to to uh, um, is it mega three sixty dot com? Um, I have to pull it up. But like I said, I shared on my page. There's a lot of things that the president has accomplished. So if you're looking at what we're, what we're standing or where, uh, what's at stake here uh, for the religious liberties, if, we, if the president is not reelected, you can kiss that goodbye. We will be censored. Uh, you know, the, the, the packing of the, 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 the court system that they're, I mean, this is unprecedented stuff that, that the Democrats are trying to put in place. Uh, you know, and you look at the justice that, that's up for, for you know, uh, you know uh, confirmation. I mean, basically a flawless woman high end, it, it just, it's just amazing. Why isn't the church happy about this? So I'm like, and I'm gonna say this, I'm shut up. I'm like, you know, I'm distancing myself from the church so much more now than I ever have. And, and I mean the, the so-called true church down to the two, because I have too many people that I know now who see it the right way. And I'm saying it just like that. And, and so by now, the, the actions speak louder than words, louder than words, policies have been enacted to, to show proof that the economy can be as, as, and one more thing, Daniel, and I just taught a series about this, Daniel uh, in Babylon, and, I, and you can pull it up on zonoparoom.com. Uh, uh, I teach Sunday school there every, li uh, live every Sunday there. And uh, we did a series a few weeks ago and showing how Daniel served this Nebuchadnezzar. The church forget how many of its leaders have served heathen kings. Now this man ain't near, look, Trump ain't nowhere near Matter of fact, he's been fighting for the church. They just don't like his personality. He's how far, he saw how off that is. And but you had a whole nation that Daniel actually said, Oh, King, live forever. You know, he he understood as a captive. And for the church to act like that it has no place in politics, that's that would be the 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 uh, the resonating, you know, uh, uh reminder for the church is how they didn't get in there and help this president out. How that he had open doors, but they all gonna say, well, it's the white evangelicals. They're the ones who always was there. Well, where were the church at? He's, he's had blacks, a few blacks, but they could have come in there. He's had his head laid on. But the prayer, there's so many things that you could point to, you know, that would get you out of this pride and get you out of this personality hangups uh, that this president has done. And, and to do it without the Holy Ghost, to, to, to absorb all of this hate and yet be so focused on, on turn the country around, oh man, like I said, we, we don't have enough time. We have, we have to do more conversations on this, but there's a lot more to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, and whether or not a person agrees with um, the Christians that he has surrounded himself with, one thing that we can say that he has endeavored to surround himself with godly counsel. Um, and of course, we could list a, 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 a whole list of names of, of Christians who have been there uh, to pray for him and to advise him and to um, lay hands on him and so on and so forth. Even if maybe you may disagree with some of their doctrines and whatnot, 
but we could see that this man has respect toward God and he has a love for the Christians of this nation, a love for all the peoples. And he, you can tell that he wants the nation to prosper. Even those that oppose him, even those that hate him are still prospering under his leadership. Um, and they're using all of their resources that he's been able to help them get against himself. And he still does it. You can see Christian, I would say, or godly characteristics more so in the president than we see in a lot of our leaders um, who at the first sign of opposition fall apart. You know, <laughs> it's, just, you know it, it's all about my haters and whatever, whatever. But what we see in this man and why I am in full support of him is just that open communication to allow the Lord in, you know, and no other president has done this in my lifetime, I know for sure. Even presidents that were considered Christians didn't have this level of involvement with the church uh, at all. And so that, that's where I look at it and for everyone who's listening out there to just really consider um, how this man is so kind to the church, uh, even those that hate him. And I remember a certain uh, presiding bishop, and I won't call his name, but I remember during the last election cycle, he wrote an open letter to uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, right before the election saying, when you get elected, we, we need this, 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 and this. And I was appalled. Wow. I said, oh, wow, they, despite what she says, despite how she said openly that she wanted to censor the church, that uh, she didn't want things like, um, like the baker who refused to make the cake. She didn't want things like that continuing to happen, you know, very open about this and doesn't care about the First Amendment, doesn't care about the Second Amendment or the Constitution in general to, as a leader that influences so many millions mm -hmm. uh, across the world, to, to do that, it, it says to me how far we fall in fallen in our understanding of God's ways of, you know, the, the way we can see how God dealt with Nebuchadnezzar, the way we can see how he dealt with Cyrus and how he raised them up to deal with his own people. Right. And to become, because after God dealt with Nebuchadnezzar, he said, look, Daniel's God is a true God, serve him. Right. And, you right. know, with Cyrus, Cyrus allowed them, you know, go rebuild, go do whatever you got to do. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll finance you. I'll give you whatever you need. Even if he was the most ungodly man by um, Jewish standards, by the law, yes. he was so kind to the people of God that I'm reminded again of the words of our Lord Jesus. If you so much as give a cold cup of water to the least of these, my disciples, you will in no wise lose your reward. Yes. And when I can see how the president has done more than give a cold cup of water, to God's precious ones, how can we not rally around that and say, okay, we may not like his personality. I, I, I personally at this point don't have a real issue because if I lived under that type of scrutiny, when I'm trying to do all that I can to help the people that are, you know, bucking against me, uh, I might have an attitude. <laughs> I might call them fake news and, you know, I might be going on Twitter rants myself. I don't know. It'd probably be a lot worse. And they'd be saying, man, so there ain't no real Christian. <laughs> but I've seen also how Trump is willing to negotiate even with his enemies, how if he sees qualities in them, even when they're going against him, he'd want to hire them. And we can see a lot of people who have come in and out of the administration where he hired or fired and, and have turned against him and all this and still uh, has good things to say about them. Uh, one to go to the funeral to pay his respects to um, Congressman John Lewis, things like that. People who are known enemies, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right, who's very vocal about these things to, to extend an olive branch to your enemies is something very Christ-like that not many believers are willing to do with that level of mistrust or, or break in relationships. And I think the Lord has raised him up even as a sign or, or a teaching tool to the believers. Look, 
this man, you can call him ungodly, but look how he treats even his enemies, right? He said all this stuff. I, 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 one example I can give is about um, Kim Jong-un. He said all this stuff, little rocket man, I got the bigger button, you know, just things like this going back and forth till we end up, we shaking hands, he's crossing the line, going into North Korea, they're signing peace deals and all this. Now, I don't know if these things will last, but one thing that we can say is that the United States of America has gained more respect worldwide, despite the opposition uh, from a man that the church had, at large has despised. And I think we should reevaluate um, what we're doing because everybody's issue with him is solely on rhetoric. No one points to any policies. No one points to anything that he uh, has accomplished. It's all about rhetoric. And I think as Christians, we need to get past that, being able to get past the emotionalism of it. And I remember the Lord teaching me when I was 18 years old, I said, Lord, why do people keep coming to church week after week? And the way I grew up, we were in church 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then you had to come back for the Sunday evening service. And then there was five, six things going on throughout the week. We're in there all the time, yet no one is really being transformed into the image of Christ. No one is really um, coming out to him and endeavoring in his will. Why do they keep coming into this? If they're not learning, if they're not growing. And the Lord said to me very simply, because their souls are getting fat. They come in, it's, it's kind of like needing a drug uh, shot. Like, you know, I come in, just give me a shot. I want to feel better, you know, because the church has largely not prepared the people of God for the real world. Like, how, how are we to stand as kings and priests in the earth uh, under the hand of the Lord Jesus um, and, and do his bidding in all the world? How do we do that when what we've largely, largely been taught was how to go from crisis to crisis? Okay, God, get me out of this. God, get me out of that. You know, and just wanting, oh, I, I need to be blessed and all this. Instead of like, who are those who actually have the mind of the Lord, who can stand in his counsel? Because I'm reminded of Jeremiah, who when all the prophets were saying, you know, this, you know, peace and safety and all this, Jeremiah was the only one who stood in the counsel of the Lord. And I, I would venture to say with us now, especially with this election, I do believe there's a, a silent majority. Uh, for the most part, I have been very silent. I haven't said much, but it's been already settled in my heart from the beginning that this is what the Lord wants this is what I'm going to do. Um, but I, I believe that the Lord is having us stand in that place between God and the people to stay the hand of God's wrath in such a way because his own people keep rejecting him. You know, yeah. when the Lord is, you know, to, to us, Elder Mick, the writing is on the wall. This is it's plain to see this is what the Lord wants. And yet what we have are people who go against that. You go against the Lord himself, you know. And um, my prayer for everyone out there listening is that we would sit aside everything. I was talking to a brother yesterday and I told him, I said, let's give everybody a clean slate. Let's give Trump a clean slate. Let's give Biden a clean slate. Let's give Harris and Pence. Let's give them all a clean slate and say, okay, everybody's clean. Everybody's free and clear. Now, where do we go from here? Who's actually saying what's necessary for the country? Who's actually saying what's necessary as far as the believers are concerned, where we have a vested interest? And then make a decision there, right? And, and follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit in your heart if you claim to be his, right? So uh, that's all I'll say about, about that. W was there anything else you wanted to add on the end of that uh, before we let go? Yes, sir. Well, very well said, my brother. Awesome, awesome speaking. I look forward to another time to talk with you uh, and, and even hear and uh, be edified. That's, that, was, that was good. It felt good to, to hear our articulation like that. Um, I would say if the church, and I mentioned this, uh, a moment ago that if the church would look back and this is how much it could resonate if the lord can literally say trump is the last trump the last president and the next one we get is going to sell us out to the new world order uh i i i absolutely believe that's possible but with that same thing in mind if it's that serious then that means we would we would be burning 
And those, I'm talking about those who, whether it's hell, whether it's life, everything changed because I didn't realize, oh God, I'm so sorry. It's too late now. You know, uh, I'm saying, my point is, we will look back at these past four years. That's what the enemy's good at. Having us, after the fact, it's over with, done. Now we're regretting. What could these four years have been if there was an honest, fair approach from media, church folks, got a, this momentum that he basically did on his own. Some of the party of his own party didn't believe. He had a press issue. But if he'd had the support, what could this four years, how much more we would have produced? Is what, as all I hear the Lord saying to me to tell your audience, God forbid if he doesn't win the election, I hope. But if he doesn't, I promise you the Holy Ghost will remind us as to what we blew as a church, whether we were, weren't loud enough. And I'm, I'm supporting it. And, and I'll, be, I'll be like, well, did I speak enough myself? I mean, it could be that, you know what I'm saying? It could, because I, it's just, this is what's at stake here. And if the and it's gonna come back to mind, the enemy gonna make sure if he had to be at that, he has to be the one to remind us. It's just that we really have lost the biggest opportunity to to you know to collaborate and really put the country. Yes, I do believe the United States. I, I teach that the United States is the seventh head on the Revelation CBs, which means we're biblical. I showed in my Daniel series how that the many, many tickle you far sin is an actual number attached to the very night that they would be taken, 539 BC. And when you put that timeline attached to that, it brings you to the year of our Lord, 1981. It's how and when we got to hear about Iraq and Iran. So, you know, where they come from? Iraq is Babylon. See, so I'm saying this thing goes really, 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 really deep when you look at what the church should have known and, and should have been conscious of. It's just so many areas that we've been let down and if God give us mercy to have another chance as you as you place the question clean slate starting first with the president he one that's been hurt the most he's one that's been been disenfranchised if you will and 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 you know not respected for all the works opportunities all, all this stuff here that nobody ever touched we ain't done they ain't done nothing we, we we haven't tapped in oh my gosh so yeah brother um uh I hope and pray that we can get another chance at it uh, where we can do 110% better. Yeah, I'm sure that history will look favorably on President Trump, just like history looks favorably on President Lincoln. Even though during his presidency, you can tell if you read you know, history that he was very much hated. The country was split. We went into a civil war. <laughs> with Lincoln, but everybody now today looks back favorably on Lincoln and what he was able to accomplish. And I want to uh, appeal that to us. Are we going to stand on the right side of history? And even when there is the day of judgment for his people, will the Lord be able to say, well done, or will he roll the tape? Okay, look at your decisions. Look what you stood for, that I told you I hated, that I told you I was against. And yet you went along with it because mama, grandma, and them, and you know um, how this is supposed to be, or you were afraid of the persecution that may come along with that. Um, we can't be those that shrink back. And so um, that's, that's my prayer for us all. Let's, let's look at it in, from an eternal perspective of the Lord. Um, I'm gonna have to stand before him and give an account, right? Hebrews chapter four, I believe it says, you know, um, all things are laid bare before him to whom we have to do or to whom we must give account, right? There's nothing that's hidden. There's no motive that's hidden. There's no thought that's hidden. There's no action, no deed that's hidden. Even if it's hidden from the world, it's not hidden from him. And so we walk this thing with fear and trembling, knowing that our God sees all, he knows all, he knows every intention, every motive. And if the eyes of the Lord are directly upon us, his own people, right? The one whom we said yes to, 
then we want to make sure we're aligned with him <laughs> and his decisions, you know, and, and his affairs in the earth, right? And subsequently in the universe, right? In the heavens and the earth. So uh, anyway, I want to say thank you to you uh, so much for coming on here this morning with me, uh, taking the time to actually sit to, to, to do this interview, especially after 20 years of not seeing each other. <laughs> you look exactly the same. <laughs> Like, it's like you haven't aged. This is how I remember. Of course, you didn't have the gray in your right, right, but right. I, I, exactly the same. Please send my love to your wife, to your family. Um, yes, uh, yes. Sometimes I go in there and I'll watch videos. I'll hear your daughter sing it. And I remember when she was a little girl uh, singing during the offering time and stuff like that. So right. what, a, what a joy to see. What a joy to see. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I would like to, um, is the call letters uh, for your program, do you know me give those out uh, as far as how to get, get into this? Yeah, if, if someone wants to join us, all they have to do is reach out to me. I'll, I'll get them in there. Um, I mean, when, did, when do you record or, or play? Uh, um, I, I do it here on Zoom um, right. uh, gotcha. with, with our family. And so the same information that I gave you to get in to those meetings. I do every Sunday and Wednesday. Um, Sunday's at 10, Wednesday's at 6.30. So um, we're at Central Time. And so the credentials that I gave you are the same ones that we use. Okay, gotcha. Well, stay on for just a few more minutes after I end the recording here uh, so I can give you a proper goodbye. Uh, but okay, thanks for everyone out there watching. And actually, you know, for those who will hear, to hear, God bless you. Go forward with the Lord, regardless of the persecution you may face. So see you guys later.